Hi and welcome to another very exciting quick tip tutorial. Today we're going to create kind of like the iOS home screen motion effect, which should look a little like this. So for you to be able to see this, I'm currently using QuickTime and a real device to simulate what you just see. And this is what we are going to create real quickly. So let me deactivate the movie recording here and bring up the Xcode beta again so that we can use the newest Swift code, which is Swift 3. And I'm going to start by creating a new Xcode project. So this is going to be a single view application. I'm going to call it motion effect and create it on my desktop. And you might have already seen it. We've got two assets here. Um, one is the Swift tutorial conference logo and the other one is our background image. So we drag both of them to our assets folder and I've just generated a 2x version of both um, images for this demo application. And what we're going to do is starting off with our main storyboard and bringing up an image view for a start. Going to resize it to fit the screen. And then I'm going to use the attributes inspector and simply enter BG for my background and I'm selecting aspect fill for my content mode. And then what we need to do is apply some constraints and we must make sure, and we scroll down to the bottom here, uh, when we pin this image view that we give it a little offset um, so that the image is slightly larger than our view controller. And I'm just choosing minus 50 here for all four sides. So let me enter that minus 50 and minus 50. And then we will add those four constraints. And what we will need to do is we will need to update our frames here. So I'm selecting um, the little icon here in my document outline. And then I'm updating my frames. And then this should look something like this. And then for our second image that we are going to need for this uh, parallax effect, I'm using another image view, I'm placing my STC logo within it. And then we select aspect fit, resize it to kind of the correct size, um, a little smaller here. All right, that should do it. And then I will move it to the bottom so that we can nicely see the effect. And what we want to do is we want to add two constraints, actually one for the view and it's um, horizontally so that it's centered horizontally and another one for the space between our uh, logo and the bottom layout guide. So I'm selecting vertical spacing here. And then all we need, we should, since the logo is kind of bigger, we should also fix the size here. So I'm control dragging here, uh, pressing control key on my keyboard and dragging um, slightly to from one corner to another and press the shift key, selecting width and height, pressing enter, and we have set up all the constraints. Then all we need to do is connecting those two image views to our code. So I'm pressing control again on my keyboard and we have a background image view, which are which is our nice landscape. And we have a logo image view. And you can actually use this technique for several purposes in your applications. Um, and it's actually great for logo uh, for for backgrounds, of course, to give a little more life to everything that's happening in your application. And we're going to write a separate function for creating this motion effect. So let's uh, call this function, maybe apply motion effect to a specific view, which is called view. It's a UI view. And we're going to need a magnitude for that purpose, which I'm defining as a float. And what we are going to do here is creating two instances of the UI interpolating motion effect. Uh, one that tracks our horizontal movement and the other that tracks the vertical movement of our device. And then we will use some key paths um, to the property that we want to change. And then let's see how that works by creating, first of all, the X motion. And we use UI interpolating motion effect here. 
and we specify now the key path to center.x. That's the property that we want to change and we're going to use tilt along horizontal axis. This is a type of our interpolating motion effect. And then we'll set two properties here. The first one is the minimum um, relative value, which is going to be the negative of our magnitude. And we're going to use the maximum relative value, which is simply going to be our magnitude. And then we'll do kind of the same thing for the Y motion. Again, a UI interpolating motion effect. Um, this time for the key path center.y and we tilt along the vertical axis this time and we do the same thing for the minimum relative value with minus magnitude and y motion maximum relative value with the magnitude and then all we have to do is create a so-called UI motion effect group and then we will um, use our group and add our motion effects by assigning an array with the X and the Y motion. And then we'll use our view to which we want to apply our motion effect and simply add motion effect, um, which is going to be our motion effect group. And then we can build that. And since we now have kind of a neat function here to do all the heavy lifting, all we need to do actually is applying our motion effect to our two views. So let's use the apply motion effect function to the first view, which is the background image view. And I have just used the magnitude of 10 and you can change um, the magnitude and create different effects and just try to see what uh, works best for you. And again, apply motion effect this time for the uh, logo image view and I chose minus 20 for my magnitude here. And now I'm going to run this application on my iPhone and my real device, and we're going to see how that looks. So here we are again, and as you can see, this looks quite nicely, and with just a few lines of code, we have created a very cool motion effect. So I hope you like what we just did with the UI motion effect and I hope you can use that for your own applications. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.